Hi, you guys. So this is problem six, problem two from chapter six, and we have um, an inductor with value of 50 microhenries and a known current of 18 TE to the negative 10 T amps. We want to find the voltage, um, the power at 200 microseconds, the time, uh, at, and we want to find out at time 200 microseconds, is the inductor absorbing energy or absorbing power or is it delivering power? We also want to find the energy at 200 micro milliseconds and uh, maximum energy of the um, of the system. So um, let's get started. For this problem, we need uh, the voltage, the inductor voltage formula. V is equal to I don't have it memorized, but I wrote it over there. L D I D T. We also have V is equal to one half. Um, P is equal to one half L I D I D T. Um, what else do we need? P is equal to V I. Makes life easier. Okay, let's get started. So, since we have um, V is equal to L D I D T, we do. 50 microhenries times D, the derivative of 18 T e to the negative 10 T. I need my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to take out the uh, units because units really messed me up when I was working out this problem. So, 50 times 10 to the negative 6 times 18, that gives me 0 0.009, and then we're going to take the derivative of this doing the product rule. It's going to be first times derivative of the second, negative 10 e to the negative 10 t, plus this times the derivative of the first. E to the negative 10t, derivative of t is just 1. Close that up. Distribute this through. So when I was working it up, I kept for, this is, I'm doing this so that you guys can avoid the pain. When I was taking, doing my derivative, I kept forgetting to distribute to the second term. And it really took me, uh, my error was uh, calculus. <laughs> So not too bad. It wasn't a, an error of um, circuit analysis. It was an error of calculus. So I don't feel too bad about that. So that's 0, 0.0. But after a while of, of continually messing up the units, I just decided to take out the micros and the millis and just everything is in its uh, is base unit. So that's going to be t e to the negative 10t plus 0, 0.00. 0, 9 e to the negative 10 t is your voltage function. And that is what I got. Okay, good. So that's the answer for A. If you want to express it more elegantly, um, you can factor out a 0, 0.00. I guess you can factor out a 9, just make this a millivolts or, make it, well, I'll leave the niceties to you. This is a perfectly good voltage function. So. A, answer to part A is negative 0 0.009 T E to the negative 10 T plus 0 0.0009 E to the negative 10 T. Now we want to find power at 200 microsecond, milliseconds. And you can do that by using the power function, which is uh, P is equal to L I D I D T. We found D I D T as part of finding the voltage, or 
we have already found the voltage function. That's just going, we can do P is equal to VI. It's your choice. So I'm going to do P is equal to VI. Since this is a very ugly number, I'm going to do the V first and then the I. So V of 200 MS, and that's going to be just V of 0.2. So that is, of course, negative 0 0.0000009, 0 0.2 e to the negative 10 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.0009 e to the negative 10 times 0 0.2. That's my V. And my I of 0 0.2. It's going to be 18 times 0 0.2 e to the negative 10 times 0 0.2. Okay? Put that into your calculator. So I have 0 0.009 times 0.2, whoops, negative 0 0.009 times 0.2 times e raised to the negative 10 times 0.2 plus. 0 0.0009 times e to the negative 10 times 0.2 gives me negative 0 0.0001218. Down here I have 18 times 0.2 times e to the negative 10 times 0.2 giving me uh, 0.4872. So this times this, V times I, gives me P at 200 ms is negative 0.0004059. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry. Uh, let me see. Fifty-nine. Yes. So one, two, three. So fifty, negative fifty-nine point thirty-four microjoules or microwatts. Okay. So here we have negative fifty-nine point thirty-four microwatts. Negative power means the inductor is del uh, delivering power. Positive power means it's absorbing. So the inductor can either deliver stored energy or absorb, absorb it. So at this point, since the power is negative, it is delivering. Okay, part. So we want to find the energy at 200 milliseconds. Uh, P energy is one half Li squared. So we have, let's do the I squared first. So we have 18. This is I squared. That's zero point. So W is one half, energy is one half L I squared, yes, L I squared. So that gives us one half times 50 micro Henry's times 0 0.23737. So 
So times 50 times 10 raised to the negative 6, divide that by 2. Let's put this in. You get 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 6 is that times 10 to you. Times 10 to the 6. And you get 5.934. Microwatts, microjoules. And so the answer to part B is 5.934 microjoules. Okay, find the maximum energy. We can either realize, well, let's take a look at the energy formula. Energy formula is. Omega is one half L I squared. The only dependency on time here is in the current. So the energy is going to be a maximum at a current when the current is maximum. So you can actually differentiate the current and set that to zero, and that will tell you when, at what time, that you will find um, at what time you will have um, maximum current, which is also equal to maximum energy. However, if you didn't see that um, and you were rushed on a test, you can always fall back on calculus. Calculus says that the uh, maximum, minimum, or points of inflection will always occur when the first derivative is equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to take this enter. I'm going to do it this way even though it's much longer because it always works and it doesn't rely when you're on a test you're not necessarily thinking clearly, you, and you know that you can do it this way, is solvable by taking the first derivative. The smarter way and the easier way is just setting the current to zero, uh, taking the derivative of the current and setting that to e equal to zero to find the maximum time, or the time of maximum, um, maximum energy. So these are not time dependent. I'm going to deal, just uh, multiply that. We have 0.5 times, 0.5 times, uh, oh heck, 0.5 times 50 times 10 raised to the negative 6. Enter. That's going to give me 0 0.40s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5. I squared. Square the I. I squared equal to 18 squared. It's going to be 324 t squared e to the negative 20 t. Distribute that through. We have 324 times 0 0.0081 t squared e to the negative 20t. Now we need to take the, the derivative of that. This is just a coefficient, which can be parked outside. Using the product rule, we have t squared times the derivative of e to the negative 20t, which is negative 20e to the negative 20t, times plus e to the negative 20t, times the derivative of the first, which is 2t. Distributing this through, negative 20 times 0 0.0081 gives me negative 0.162t squared e to the negative 20t plus, distributing that through, we have 2 times 0 0.0081 giving me 0 0.0162 e to the negative 20 t, t times t. I can factor out an e to the 20 t from both terms, and e to the 20 t, I also have a t. So factoring those out gives me e to the negative 20 t times t e to the negative 20 t, 
What's left inside is negative 0 0.162 T. I have one T left plus 0 0.0162. I've backed up both of that. So. so this term will be 0 when T is equal to 0, which is trivial, or when this is equal to 0. This is the interesting one. If we set this equal to 0, I'm going to come back up here. Setting that equal to 0 gives me negative 0 0.162t is equal to negative 0 0.0162. If I threw by negative 0 0.162, we'll give you t is equal to 0 0.1. So that's when the maximum current in the, uh, or the maximum energy will occur is that t is equal to 0 0.1. So, Going back to our formula for maximum, so omega or energy max, which is at 0 0.1, will be one half 50 millihen microhenries times I squared. So this will be I of 0 0.1 squared, which will give me one half, well, let's do one half, 0.5, well, 25 microhenries, 25 microhenries times I squared, which will be 18, 0 0.1, E to the negative 10 times 0 0.1, that quantity squared. Put that into your calculator. That will give you times 10 to the 6, 10.96 microjoules. Okay, and that is the answer.